What's up, y'all? Talbot here. I'm in my little tiny, teeny, tiny pressure cooking room. Um, yeah, I'm making this video mainly because I was just responding to a bunch of my comments, which I so much appreciate comments. They're awesome. It, um, I like them for a lot of reasons. It gives me good feedback, um, helps me stay motivated doing the videos and, you know, doing doing what I'm doing with the mushroom world and, and other things. Um, but also it gives me ideas for other videos to make. Cool. So this, I wasn't going to make this video until I was just responding to comments. And I thought it'd be cool to do a video, a little more details on how my pressure cooker works, my boiler, and just a little more intricacies of how this works. Uh, there are some other videos I've done on, on pressure cooking in general, but I'm just going to try to get a little bit more detailed. If you haven't watched our last video, watch it. You get access through that door, this one right here. What are some ins and outs? This boiler I did buy, um, commercially, I guess. This cooker, on the other hand, I got used from the north of Ecuador. I believe she was uh, a mushroom grower who worked in the university and I got it used. Um, I do believe, as you can tell, this probably was home built. There's a lot of things fabricated where I live, um, which hopefully gives you motivation that you could fabricate things. There's probably a lot of people watching this going, dude, don't encourage people to fabricate a pressure cooker, which I get because, you know, they can explode. Yes, I've done it. Again, this room, right, is where I load my dirty substrate and then before I load it, so I've got the pressure cooker loaded, it's cooking today, I give it at least tomorrow, I'll probably, because the weekend's coming, gonna wait Saturday, Sunday, and then I will inoculate that stuff on Monday, right? So I let it cool in the cooker. Of course, you can pull it out when I was in full production at all my grow rooms that I used to have. I would actually pull off two cooks a day and the way I'd do that is I'd unload it when they're hot um, and unload it in front of my laminar flow head and let them cool. They cool a lot faster when they're out of the cooker. It takes about 36 hours to cool in the cooker, right? So before I unload them in here, I spray this whole room down. You're like, dude, you've talked about this before. The reason why I'm talking about it now is there was a comment about like, oh, the dude's poor is everything's rusted. He should replace that. Um, fair enough. Yes, money is a thing when, you know, growing mushrooms. Yeah, I really am not wanting to buy a new pressure cooker. This one does work great. The reason why everything is so rusted is the way I clean this room is I use chlorine dioxide, also known as MMS, um, to sterilize this room so that I can open it into my clean room safely. Um, chlorine dioxide is an oxidative thing. It's an oxide. So it's, that's what's making all my metal rust, even the stainless. Um, you know, after that comment, I actually appreciate the comments because it can help me learn things. And I'm like, you know what, maybe it's overkill. It's a super powerful sterilizing agent, but maybe it's overkill. Maybe just vinegar spray might be enough to knock anything down in the air and clean the floor. So maybe I'll switch to vinegar, which apparently vinegar, I've done it. You can soak it in rust and it will de-rust things. So who knows, maybe, you know, over time, we'll just do the reverse. I'm gonna try that out. This is my boiler, right? Um, the boiler, very key piece of the puzzle here. This is what supplies the steam to the cooker, right? So it's a two part thing. You need the cooker, you need the boiler. I bought them separately. Again, that one was used. This one I ordered new, believe it or not. I have been using it for quite a few years. Basically what's happening here is this is automatically gets water, right? From this tube, it goes into the boiler. So there's a flame underneath where it's running. It heats the water to steam and then it leaves in this tube here and goes into the cooker, right? This whole line as well as the cooker itself is pressurized, right? And so that pressure backs up into this little compartment. And so I can read the pressure here and it also runs this little thing right here and runs the actual pressure cooking. Whoop! it just clicked back on. Right? So literally while we're doing it, that pressure dropped to the point where the spring was able to push it back on. It just clicked on. You can hear the flame running, right? And now that's heating the water, adding steam to that cooker, and it's bringing it back up to the pressure where it's gonna hit a point where the spring clicks off. So coming closer, I'm gonna show you this thing. So when it rises, right, this little thing, you can see there's two springs right here. This little spring, comes all the way up. I'm gonna manually show you. It comes up, comes up, comes up, and it pushes against the resistance and clicks off. Then the pressure over time drops, 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 and then the spring clicks it back on, right? So I believe with a boiler, like when you have a, like a steam room, 
it runs it off of off of temperature right so it's just what you order a boiler for so this is pressure rather than temperature which the pressure in turn governs the temperature one of the comments I had is what temperature does it sterilize the reason why you have a pressure cooker is so you can get higher than the temperature of boiling water so I believe you hit sterilization point at 250 degrees Fahrenheit which is roughly about 15 psi depending on your elevation you live at and then I have it raised up to 22 and then drop back down to 15 so I'm above 250 degrees Fahrenheit and just regulates between there you need to run the cooker for a while it's not like when you're doing your petri or your agar stuff inside in a small pressure cooker the the space is smaller the jar is smaller so you can get away with just doing it for 45 minutes when you have these big blocks you need to run it for a, a period of time so that the the heat will penetrate into the internal core of those blocks so when I have my jumbo block blocks I believe they're the XLS or something um, I tend to run this I tend to sterilize for a lot longer than most people so I run this for five and a half hours because I have my thing super tightly packed there is space around the blocks as you can see in this um, but I have it tightly packed so I, I just don't want to take chances I think if it's overkill doing it five and a half hours when I do my smaller blocks my large blocks I can fit 24 in here and then I do it for four hours so the way I regulate the time Obviously, I come down and check it. I set my watch, do that, so you can come down, make sure things haven't run out of gas, make sure there's not something weird going on. But as my backup to this system, I just have this simple light timer, right? So I have it set. I know about it takes about 45 minutes to build 215 PSI. So I put it in between that one. This is half hour increment timer. And then I have it set to go all the way around to five and a half. So if I get injured or something weird happens or my alarm doesn't go off and I forget, this will automatically turn off, which is a nice little safety to have. So kind of just wish I'd done a divider wall here, which I might do the line, mm, just clicked off. Um, pressure hit its point. So now it's gonna gurgle, gurgle, gurgle and drop on back down. Takes about 10 minutes to drop. The better the seal, the tighter. So I seal this thing with an auto belt, right? Um, this is just like a big truck belt right check it out um, and that goes around the limp it, lip it took me a long time to get the right seal and then a nice little trick to keep this thing making a nice seal yes gang a lot of things are homemade around here um, is that I use that high temperature silicone so that if there's any high points I can kind of put that in there let it partial dry and then close the cooker and it helps the seal last a lot longer and make a nice seal because the tighter the seal, the less gas you use, obviously, right? And which is important. And also it keeps a really nice vacuum. So I love when I open this cooker um, and you know I'm taking off some of those last um, clamps here and I hear a release of pressure. I'm like, yeah, cool. It was like at a negative pressure inside. It was making a vacuum, which as it goes plus pressure and then into a vacuum, annihilates bacteria. Cool, so thanks so much for watching, comment. Let me know any other questions, things I missed. Um, I'm, there's plenty of things I missed, but you know, it's actually easier than you think to have your own sterilization setup. Obviously, this is like a nice mid-range. It's nothing huge like compared to Stamets, um, but it's also not tiny, right? And so I hope it inspires you. Thanks for watching. I do really appreciate the watch. I appreciate the views and thank you. And uh, you keep on rocking the fungal, fungal world, fungal freedom. Um, check out our other videos and more to come. Thank you. Mm-hmm.